Hey everyone, Beastman coming at ya. And today, gonna be exploring flying within the Unity editor. And this is something we did with my first Unreal tutorial. And so a lot of people asked for porting that over to Unity. So gonna be doing exactly just that. And here's just a quick taste of how this is gonna work. So gonna go in here, have my controllers, and unlike in the Unreal version, I actually have the full controllers and can press buttons and stuff. And so this is just a free Unity asset that you can download. And if I pull the trigger, then I fly in the direction of my controller. So I can fly through this giant monster, fly above him, fly around here, go straight down. And yeah, I really like the sense of scale with this. But let's just kind of hop into how we can build this really fast. So cool. Now, to start off, as always, gonna go ahead and open up a brand new Unity project. And I'm using Unity 5.4 because it just came out of beta. So that's super exciting. And we'll just go ahead and call this flying video, save it to the desktop, and it's a 3D project. So that's all fine and dandy. Now, it just takes a few seconds for this to load up. And once we do, I'm just gonna go straight to the asset store. Open this up. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pull in the assets we need, which is the Steam VR plugin. So go ahead and import that or download it if it's your first time. So that takes a couple seconds here. And then the other asset I want is the low poly city block. And this is basically the scene that you saw at the beginning, beginning of the video. So I'll go ahead and click that. And I'm gonna hit import here. Now, this project is a little big, so the import does take a little bit of time. So once the import dialog pops in, I'm just going to go ahead and cut it. So get this dialog, bunch of different assets, and then go ahead and click import, and I'm cut, and I'll see you at the end of this. All right, so now that we have our assets imported in, I'm just going to go ahead and close the asset store. There are a bunch of SteamVR settings. I'm just going to go ahead and quickly accept all of those. That's fine and dandy. And then let's just quickly open up our street scene. And once we do that, it's gonna start baking the lights for this scene. So you might notice it's a little dark, but we'll just kind of let that do that in the background. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and just, we'll just start scripting. So I'm gonna go up to the assets folder here. I'm not gonna be too nitpicky about organizing things. We'll just call it flying. So this is the script that's gonna very much parallel exactly what we wrote in Unreal as far as having that flying module, pre uh, I guess, blueprint in that case. Um, yeah, like I said in that video, prefabs are very similar to how blueprints are handled in Unreal. So something to keep in mind. And so just like with what we wrote in the blueprints, we're gonna need access to three variables. The first is gonna be, let's call this a transform. It's going to be our head. The next two are going to be access to the Steam VR tracked, tracked object. So one for the left hand, and we can just copy and paste this line here for the right hand, and just rename it right hand. And so yeah, so that's going to be our three references that we're going to need. And an update, like we did with the blueprints, we're going to do two subtractions to get the vector from our head to our hands, and then combine those together to get the direction vector. So again, that's also really simple. So let's call this left dir is going to be the left hand dot transform dot position minus our head's position. And again, we can copy this line right here paste that, and then let's just rename our variables. So this one's going to be the right direction, and this is going to be the right hand instead. Nice and simple. So that's going to be our two vectors that represent going from our head to our hand. And now the last vector thing that we need to do to get the actual direction is going to be vector 3 dir is going to be the left dir, or sorry, not left hand, left dir plus right there. So that combines our vectors coming out from our head and gets us a single direction vector. 
So now that we have that direction vector, the last thing we really need to do is call an update. So we're going to take our current position, and then we're going to do a quick plus equals to it in the direction. And yeah, that's basically all we need to do to actually just start flying around. And so the next thing that we did in that Unreal tutorial was actually we added in a small flip-flop that's just flipping the direction anytime we pull the triggers on our controllers. So we're just going to do that really fast because that's also surprisingly easy. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and get rid of the start method right here. And we'll just create a private Boolean called is flying. We'll set that to false initially. And so in our update, in order to get our left hand and right hand to know when they're actually being pulled and being pressed, I guess I should be saying, is we actually need to get the device. And so as I do in all my tutorials, I never remember the exact, the exact lines of code to write to get that. So I always just go into the test throw script right here and copy line 22 and 21 because those are the exact lines we need, honestly. And so, yeah, so we just need to duplicate this a little bit for the left and right hand. And so we just need to get the device. So let's call them L device for left device and then right device or R device for right device. So get those devices. And then all we have to do is get rid of this joint code because that was only for the testing, for the for test throwing. And then just copy this line, put it there, and then we do this for left, and we do this for right. And actually, instead of anding, we're going to do a quick or. And the reason for that is we just want to know if we pressed either of the triggers on our devices. And as soon as we do that, we're just going to literally say, is flying is not as fine. So that code exactly represents what we did with the Unreal side and having that blueprint, um, where we had the flip flop that's just changing that Boolean back and forth. And so is flying is going to be our Boolean, and that's the one that's constantly going back and forth every time we pull the triggers. And so we have left device, right device, the, and the only thing we need to do is actually listen for whether or not we're flying. So if we are flying, then what we're going to do is actually do this code. And if we're not flying, we're not even going to bother doing any of the calculations. So that pretty much summarizes exactly in, what is this? This is about like 30 lines of code. This summarizes what we need to do to actually get flying up and running within a script. Now, the only thing that we actually have to do after beyond this is really just set up our scene. So I went ahead earlier on and opened up that street one scene. There are a couple of things we want to do here. One, there's a missing prefab. So just going to go ahead and get rid of that. And then they have a camera in here. And with Unity 5.4, the thing you want to pay attention to is I'd actually kind of by default will use the cameras in your scene for the head tracking. Since we want to actually use the prefab for the camera rig and being able to actually see our controllers, we're actually going to get rid of that camera. And so the, in, in replacing that, what we actually need to do is go ahead, take the prefab, the camera rig prefab, and just drag that into our scene somewhere. I like kind of having it near this tripod guy because it really kind of does resemble, I mean, it's definitely not near the same visual quality as Showdown, but for a free asset that's like pretty low poly done by some 3D artist. I think this is really cool. Um, so yeah, that's basically put this in here. And then the only thing we need to do is go ahead and add our component. And that's just going to be the script we created, which is called flying. So go ahead and do that. And we just have to, since we made them as public variables, we need to actually assign them here in Unity. So go ahead and they're nicely labeled for us. Take the camera head, put that there, put the right controller in the right hand and the left controller in the left hand. And yeah, that pretty much does it. So now let me actually hit play. And this full screens. Yep, you guys are able to see that. 
And so now I'm just going to go ahead and jump into here right now. Put the headset on. Controller is turned off, so I've got to go ahead and turn those on. We have we can see them nice and easy right here. And so now, just like in the beginning, if I pull the trigger, I fly around. Uh, I'm moving a lot faster, and that's because I didn't add any scaling parameters to my flight mechanism. So it's just kind of using the raw data for how how far my controllers are from my head and how far away they are from each other. We can, of course, scale this down really simply. Just like we saw with the blueprints, we can do the exact same thing here. And so let's go ahead and stop this, jump back into our script. And so notice here how we're doing just dir. What we'll do instead is simply multiply this by 0.1f, or divide it by 10. Either way works. Like It's your preference on that matter. But basically, all that does is slows down our movement in that given direction by a tenth. And so now, if we actually just quickly hop back in. So go ahead here. Put these on. I can now see my controllers. So now I'm flying at the exact same speed. And yep, I can kind of like hover here if I put my controllers off to the side, which is like a really nice effect that you kind of get for free. I can like get up and close with this little guy and yeah that's uh, that's pretty much it it does kind of feel weird now that I've stopped flying and then he's moving that I now kind of feel like he's my frame of reference for the world which is just a weird feeling so I'm just gonna zoom out of that but uh, yeah that's pretty much all there is to it flying is just one of those really simple things to actually add to your scene but it really, it's a nice way of kind of getting around, of course. You do want to be careful a little bit about motion sickness and making sure you don't make your, your players feel really uncomfortable. But overall, I think it's definitely, if you want to feel like Superman, this is one of the ways to do it. And really easy to do. Just pick up a scene, add a script like that was literally like that small, and you're off and running. So hope you guys enjoyed this and now can kind of compare how Unreal works versus Unity as far as like the scripting side is concerned. That's kind of why I wanted to make this video in the first place. But uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions and make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this and want to see more content. But other than that, this has been Fuse Man, and I'm signing out.